space. Some call it the final frontier. Others say it is only one small step away. Space is our future, and there are many people working to make that future possible. Future Space is an international project focused on astronomy and space exploration to provide a catalyst for change in teaching of science, technology, engineering and mathematics in European educational systems. It aims to inspire students and introduce young people to career opportunities in the space sector and other innovative areas. In this series of videos we are going to meet professionals working in the space industry. Who are they? What is their area of expertise? And what brought them to the space sector? It's time to find out. My name is Gordon Waślewski. I'm a PhD student at the Space Research Center here in Poland. That's where I work on my PhD. It's, it's basically about space resources about water on the moon and how can we extract it. One of the worst uh, things about uh, space exploration is that as long as we are dependent on Earth, and, and we are dependent on Earth, we are using uh, many mission consumables like fuel, like uh, oxygen and water. But if we gain that ability to resupply them uh, anywhere in the solar system, we can go further away from Earth more sustainably. Basically, since 2010, when uh, NASA confirmed that there is water on the moon, many people went totally nuts about it. It's the, the nearest source that we can find water, and with water we can do many, many things in space. We can develop a source of drinking water for astronauts or oxygen when we split it into hydrogen and oxygen. And when we split it into hydrogen and oxygen, we can liquefy it and basically make rocket propellant out of it, so fuel. So anything that we need in space to um, make our life in space and, and, and our mission concepts way easier to develop and way easier to perform is out there on the moon. My work um, is experimental, so I simulate this whole processes, but it's also um, physical, computational. Uh, it's, uh, it's also about modeling those whole processes uh, that could take place on the moon within the next decade or so. Another part of my job and my affiliation is, is a private space company also here in Warsaw where I'm an engineer and um, our company builds precision mechanical instruments, deployable structures, uh, antennas, lightweight structures and things like that. We fly them to space so it's a very exciting thing to do. It's an opportunity to work for players such as European Space Agency or NASA uh, here in Poland. The milestone mission that we took part in was the HP3 mole and that was on the InSight mission launched by NASA to Mars. Our instrument was a percussion mole um, and it penetrates Martian regolith uh, and at least it tries to do that. I'm actually a petroleum engineer by trade. When I was on my, I think that was the, f the last year of bachelor's um, here in Poland uh, in petroleum engineering, I went to this lecture um, by this American professor uh, who was talking about uh, drilling in space. That basically shifted my whole career because back then I was thinking about uh, being just a regular engineer that, that's developing some kind of shale gas deposit somewhere out there in the States or Europe or anywhere else in the world. Uh, this nexus between the space resources and what uh, I was previously doing was actually the, the, the right thing and the, the niche that was so good to pursue in my life. My first Pace kind of job was when I enrolled in, in a PhD program because before that I was uh, I was doing regular terrestrial kind of programs petroleum engineering mining and geology but my master's thesis was uh, was all about uh, water on the moon and how could we extract it 
and then I started my PhD program in Warsaw at the Space Research Center. And after that, uh, things went pretty well. I've enrolled in the Space Resources program in Colorado. That was the first uh, space resources educational program in the world, and I think it still kind of is. And now in Astronica, uh, I'm, I'm a happy employee of Astronica for for a year and something, and I've got this job at the internship program. And basically, a majority of people that uh, enroll in that internships stay with the company. So I've stayed with Astronica, and it's it's pretty exciting. Well, definitely there's a connection between the, the research part and the engineering work part. The fact that my research is mostly in, basically in thermics, so, so in heat uh, transfer and mass transfer, all of that, it's a very interesting competence to have to, to develop uh, planetary systems like robots, uh, like penetrometers, because you understand the physics that those robots use or, or have to comply with. It's a good competence to have as an engineer that you clearly understand the physics that is out of this world. The most crucial part of education, uh, I think, in a space sector, when you're at the university, uh, the most important part is not the main courses or being good at it. Uh, is the extracurricular activity, something where you could have a hands-on experience on development or of something or of a concept or of a, of a model. It's good when you're at the university uh, to have to gain any kind of experience as soon as possible. Space industry in general is pretty in interdisciplinary, so it, it, you need a lot of different people from different kind of backgrounds and competences to develop anything. You need um, uh, scientists and engineers and, and economists and, and managers and things like that. I'm pretty confident that most of you, e even if you're uh, more uh, an artistic fellow or, or more into science or more into engineering, you could find uh, the right thing for you. Uh, very easily. A scientist, an engineer, or maybe an explorer. Space industry is full of amazing career opportunities, but it offers more than just employment. It's an endless adventure of new technologies and innovative ideas, constantly bringing us closer to our future in space. <laughs>